Good morning. Today I'd like to speak about blockages of faith. Blockages of faith. You know, often people uh, try to receive from God physically or mentally or what we might call carnally, and yet God is a spirit and he's a perfect spirit. The Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. And this we can often do many different ways. Jesus gave us the key in the Mount, uh, um, the Beatitudes on the Mount. He said, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are those who are meek, they will inherit the earth, pure in heart will seek God, etc., etc. He was talking about attitudes, spirit attitudes. Now, you can offend the Holy Spirit by various means. One of them is to keep bitterness in your heart and unforgiveness towards others. We ourselves have been forgiven and we have to forgive others and if we don't do that as an act of our will then you'll find it's very difficult to call on God and get uh, forgiveness and healing for yourself. The second one is doubt and unbelief. If you allow doubt and unbelief to settle in your mind or to, or, or to focus on them in your heart, uh, then these will interrupt the uh, healing power of the Holy Spirit to reach your body and your mind. <clears throat> the third, of course, is getting involved in the things of this world, focusing on physical things like even doctors or medicines, things that uh, detract you away from the one holy God who can save, heal, and deliver you. You focus upon the wrong thing. Peter focused upon the wind and the waves. While he was still focusing on, focusing on the word that came from Jesus, inviting him to walk on water with him, he walked on water, but as soon as he focused upon the waves, the physical uh, things around him, he sank. The Bible tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. Spirit things work the same on both sides of uh, light and darkness. Uh, they are what I call spirit dynamics. Uh, you have to have faith in the devil to call him up, and you have to have faith in God to call him down. The spirits um, operate a certain way, and in the Western world we have uh, thought that having faith in God is a mental attribute similar to learning mathematics or geography or history as a subject. This is not so. Uh, simple people, peasant people, can learn how to move in the dynamics of the spirit a lot quicker than those who have been educated. You have to put your education away and you have to put your uh, mental attributes on one side and look at things from the spirit realm with your spirit, your human spirit, uh, uh, touching with God's Holy Spirit. You see things a different way. Do you understand? You know, when I counsel people, sometimes they come in and they think they've got all sorts of problems that they haven't. And a, a spirit of me shows me what the real problem is, and sometimes before they even arrive. Uh, we have to look at the spirit realm, not the mental realm. The mental realm will lead us astray and can be deceived quite quickly. But the Spirit of God is consistent. The book of Malachi 3 tells us in verse 6, I am the Lord and I do not change. The devil also doesn't change. God doesn't change and the devil doesn't change. They're absolutes. You can grieve the Holy Spirit by not respecting his word, God's word. If you don't respect God's word, Jesus said it's like the birds, they come and steal the word straight away. Now faith comes by hearing God. And if you let the word be stolen from your memory, from your heart, then of course you don't get healed. Now I tell someone you're healed. But of course they're not. They can look at their broken body and and say to themselves, I'm not healed, and immediately forget what I said. But I'm saying it in the Lord. This means Jesus is saying it. And Jesus is saying, you're healed. And if you put your focus upon what Jesus says, and act accordingly, then you are. 
And Jesus said to Peter, You can walk on water, come and join me. Then he could, you see. But immediately he looked at his broken body, or if you look at your broken body, then you can't. But when Jesus tells you, you're healed, you can. Your body's not yet healed, not in the physical sense, but it is healed because he said it. You focus upon what he says. You walk by faith, not by sight. And you operate by faith. This means spirit, not a determined effort in the brain. It means you operate in spirit. This is different from the brain. And that little paradigm shift that you need to focus in spirit instead of brain makes all the difference in the world. You can live or die by what you do, by what you say. Next thing, of course, is you have to confess it, meaning act on it, confess it, and believe it, and say it, and really believe it with all your heart. You are healed. Jesus said you were healed. So, well, you can't yet get out of bed, but you're healed. You see? As you focus upon that more, hold it more, focus only upon that, and don't focus upon your broken legs or something that's stopping you from doing what Jesus says you can. As you focus upon it saying, I'm healed, as you mean it, as you claim it, as you speak it from your heart. Bible says, when you believe and you confess, then it's yours. At a certain period of time, that healing comes through the realm of the spirit into the realm of the flesh. I had a friend, a counselor friend, and she lost her hair on top of her head, and that was terrible for her because she was a woman. And every day she confessed that that hair was back, and it took months. One day she woke up and it was back. And you know, it was the same length as the rest of her hair on the head. I mean, it was a big place. It's nearly as big as mine on top of my head. It was a big place that would, all her hair had fallen out. I think it's called alopecia. And, and there was no remedy. And yet she went to God and asked for healing, believed it was hers, and started to say, I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. Every morning, every evening, she said to the mirror, I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. And she claimed it, held onto it, you know, believed it with her heart. And it became hers. One morning she woke up to go look in the mirror and claim I'm healed, and all the hair was there. And, you know, it was the same length as the rest of her hair. It had instantly come, overnight. And it was four or five inches long, from nothing to four or five inches long, all in one night. You see, you have to believe at the expense of doubt. Doubt comes from the devil. Fear comes from the devil. Being afraid of your sickness, being afraid of death, being afraid that God won't work for you, comes from the devil. You have to believe in one or the other. You believe in the fear or you believe in faith. Which one will you believe? Because that's the one you're going to get. Removing blockages is to remove the fear, remove the worries, remove the concerns, the anxieties, remove the wrong focus, remove disrespect for God's word, remove unforgiveness in your life, remove any kind of spirit sins that is grieving the Holy Spirit as you remove them. You won't need to ask again. The healing is already sent. The time that you ask God, it is sent to you. Because it is yours. That the time you receive it is when you please God. Not when you want to please God, but when you actually please God. You see, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God, the Bible says. And you can grieve him with wrong attitudes, wrong ways, wrong thinking, and, and being natural and not spiritual. 
all these things. It says the spiritual things are shown to us by the Spirit, to our spirit, not to our brain. Amen? We believe these things and must live in this realm of the Spirit. We are spirits living in a body. We have a mind. And we must live in this realm. We must focus upon this realm and believe this realm and not look at the things around us in the natural realm. These are all subject to God. With God, nothing is impossible. And with you, if you believe, nothing will be impossible. That's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus says. You can trust him. Amen. Get rid of the blockages. You won't need to ask again for your miracle. It'll just come through from the cloud to you. God bless you all.